welcome. This is Melissa with the Stock Swoosh and a reviewing year to date for the Gap Options newsletter annual subscription. This is the results for 2021 year to date. Again, we have another month left in the year. This is advanced trader tracking. We'll discuss that risk in a minute. Results for the year is 1,283,803. Um, and this is going into the holiday week. So we've got, well, we've got the rest of November and then we've got all of December. So we'll see where we go until the end of the year. I was discussing this in the trading room this morning. I've been extremely focused this year really on getting a high win ratio. I'm getting a lot more winners um, this year and some big winners that we've had as well. If you have questions and you're interested in signing up for the Gap Options newsletter, I'll explain more about that in a minute. You can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com or call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can feel free to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype as well. So we are at the very tail end of earnings season for the fourth quarter. First quarter earnings season starts then in January. So we have retail that's out this week and next week, we'll see what we get. Earnings season makes it a very profitable time to trade. We've seen some nice follow through in some things and we're gonna start to see some volatility in the market. Today was the first part of it. Today was the beginning part of it. Market just completely 100% reversed today and is selling off tonight. Again, where do we go tomorrow, up or down? I don't know till I get up and rate the gap. But it's interesting going into a holiday week with this much volatility. All year long we rallied and I thought it was strange because the economic backdrop did not support the moves that the market was making. But the fact is that I think 2022 could be a very volatile year, which means it will be for, it will make for good trading. But it also means you really have to know what to do or you have to follow someone that does know what to do. So how do I make the picks? I use my rating system. There's no prerequisites to sign up for the options newsletter. However, I make the picks on the letter. If you have done the Golden Gap course, I think it helps you in the letter. A lot of people take the class after they sign up for the letter. They sign up for the letter, they start making money, they realize my system works, and then they end up doing the class after the fact. If you want to go that route, that's fine. There's no prerequisites for doing the options newsletter. It is only an annual subscription, though. Please do not email me for monthly or quarterly or half annual or anything. I only have the one-year subscription, okay? It's totally worth it. And we, we do a lot of trades. There's so many trades, you won't even be able to do all the trades unless you have a huge account. So don't worry about it. You will get your money's worth on this newsletter for one year. And again, there's no prerequisites. However, having an understanding will definitely help you. Where would you get that understanding? You would get that understanding in the Golden Gap course, okay? Some people have been doing options for years though. They just want the trade ideas, that's it, boom. They take them, the targets are in the letter, and they set their own uh, stop, and they set their own exit, and they do it fine. And I do have many people in the letter that have never done the class too. So I leave that up to you, it's a personal decision. Overall though, so far, this year, 2021, we've had 412 trades. So win ratio, so far this year is 66%, okay? 11 break even. 141 losers and 260 winners. Those are the stats to date for this year. Again, we're into this last week here, or not the quite the last week, the second to last week for November. So we've got about five more weeks left, I think, in the year. If you look at the calendar, um, I think it's five more weeks left in the year. Interesting because this is a really good win ratio. So that means for every trade that you take, you have to look at it that you will have what of every 10 trades you're going to have almost about seven winners and three losers and i suspect we'll be up over the 70 percent by the end of this calendar year so 66 percent win ratio is really good what does it mean it means that you're making money if you're doing all the trades so um if you have questions about trade management i do Go over that in the Gap Options course. You don't have to take the big class for that. If you want to ask me specifically about the newsletter once you sign up, because again, the targets are in the newsletter, you have two options for trade management. You get out of the targets. I give the targets the number targets. I give them in the letter. You just set it, you get out right at the target, you watch it. Or you can get out of every trade at 50%, but then you're gonna, move, you're gonna uh, miss the ones that move bigger. So the ones that go 100%, 200%, you're not gonna get them. You're not gonna get those moves. Or you could set everyone at 100%, but some trades don't go to 100%. I think really the best thing to do is what? Is to watch the trades and the target and the letter. But some people are busy and they don't want to do that or they don't trust they're going to get out. So some people buy an option, say for example, at a dollar, 
and they immediately put a sell order, it's a day order, it's a cancel order at a buck fifty. So if it hits that, they're out and they made 50%, okay? So that's something you can discuss with me individually. And again, we can discuss your background. You can feel free to call me and discuss this with me and ask me questions. These are all the trades we did this whole year. So I just have them in here for everybody to see. And I, I really would love to, if I have time, I don't think I'm gonna have time this week during the holiday. But one of these weeks between now and before the end of the year, I'm gonna to try to put together a whole uh, week or a whole month, I don't know if I have time to do a whole month or a whole week of, of options trade so you can see and a whole week. And I'll do that with uh, a beginner amount and an advanced trader amount. So all of these trades though, the average risk in these trades was approximately $8,000 risk, okay? So in the parentheses are the losers and everything else that's not is in the winner category. You see here some of these were, you know, 150%, 200% winners. Then you see some were losers. Now, how do I manage the trades? I let every trade play out. So I don't really have a stop. The amount I risk is the stop. So for example, if I risk $8,000 in a trade, say for example, this Twitter here that lost, this was earlier in the year, I'll run it all the way out. If I risk 7,600 in the trade, I'll run it all the way out to the end of the end of the expiration if it doesn't run. So I might take it on Monday, and if it never goes right, then I just lose in it. I don't kill it, okay? Some people kill them at half, I don't do that. Now, let's say, for example, I take a Twitter, and it goes a little bit. I'm not getting out if it goes a little bit. I'm just not getting out there. I want it to go at least 50%, preferably 100%. That's what I'm looking for in these trades. And some of these ones are smaller gains that you'll see here, like even the Amazon. I probably held that until the very last day or up until the night before the last day and got out with a, with, with a partial profit. So um, that I'm looking at every trade to try to win or lose. That's really, I think, the easiest way to manage it. This was a good period in here. Winner, 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 winner. Sometimes I get in a roll. Sometimes I really, really am on a roll where just like every trade I do is working. There was a period like that recently, actually, in this fall earnings season. And there was a time like that in the summer. Um, it was, I think it was on Memorial Day or something. There was a time like that where like, I just, every trade worked. I mean, like I can get in a roll like that. Like I have that ability, I have that capability. And if the trades are there, you know, I spot them, I see them. But you have to account for the occasional loss as well. Like I said, 66% win ratio so far year to date. We'll see where we are by the end of the year. Target was a nice one. We had a nice trading target recently. Again, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. So sometimes I will stack them. A couple Twitters in here where I will do multiples. I will do different strikes and the same ticker symbol. Again, it's up to you if you want to do them all, but I do that to spread them out, different cost. Sometimes different expiration dates or because I want to get a bigger move in something or because I want to stack the profits of how I'm taking them. We do a lot of the things that you're familiar with. All of these stocks, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Twitter, all of these, Zoom, you've heard of these. You've The market there, you have um, Facebook was a big one. You've traded these stocks, you're familiar with them. You know what, what uh, these companies do. So we do things at a volume and we tend to do option things that are very expensive that I would never day trade like Amazon and Google. I wouldn't day trade that either or Tesla. But we also do things that I would day trade. And sometimes we'll do a day trade like an Apple and an option in Apple. If I do something like that, then I absolutely love it. And if you're in the room and the options are at the same time, you know then you better do that one. That's a good one. We've done that before in NVIDIA too. We've done it before in the market. We've done it before in Facebook. We've had a lot of big trades actually in Facebook this year. I, I'm just thinking about that now. Like I have to go through and see what ones were puts and what ones were calls. There was just, it seems like we've done an awful lot in Facebook this year. Again, Tesla is always a nice winner, but it has a huge, massive spread, and it's very pricey. Netflix was a big one there. Q's, Apple, Netflix again, Q's again. Amazon can be fun to trade as well. Again, very costly. You have to set a risk. Your risk every trade should be the same in every trade. So this was, this was a, a couple period in here this week where there was losers. You have to account for that. So say I call 10 trades in a week and you don't want to do all 10, but then you have to decide how many you want to do at a time. Say you only want to do five. Say you only want to do three. You have to decide that too. Goldman we have done in a while, that's nice to train. IBM worked a bunch of times this year. Sometimes I'll get out of something break even on the very last day. UPS was a good one. Lily, we did that too. Microsoft, we did a bunch of times this year, which was nice. Twitter, again, lots of Twitters. Netflix haven't really done that 
and gotten good moves in that for a while. But we'll be looking for that into next earnings season, which is January. Tesla, Netflix, BYND a bunch of times, huge trade in BYND. Microsoft again, Spy, Google, all of these. You know them. The diamonds is ETF for the Dow. Boeing, I don't see in here. We did it a lot last year in 2020. We did it a few times this year, but not as much as we did last year. Another big winner in Tesla. Um, NVIDIA pretty much probably was really the gap of the year. I think we did more trades in NVIDIA actually than anything. NVIDIA, 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 all of the NVIDIAs. Look at that. Just a million NVIDIAs. Those are the kinds of trades where you can't uh, screw them up, I call it. You cannot make a mistake where you, like, it doesn't matter what you paid for. It doesn't matter what time you got it. It doesn't matter if you did one, if you did all of them. Like, everybody made money in those NVIDIA trades. Everyone. I mean, it was just like, it was just crazy, you know. I mean, you couldn't have lost in them, you know. And, of course, those are the best ones for people where they really love them. And also, everybody loves them when they go the second thing I call them. So sometimes I'll call a trade in the morning. Say it's 8 o'clock in the morning. You can't take it then. You take it into the open. Another big winner in Tesla. Sometimes they go that day. They run that day. They run up. They run down, depending on who we do a put or a call. But sometimes they take a day or two. I know people lose patience, but... You know, you want the move, you got to give it a chance to work. That's why you can never risk more than you're afraid to lose or can afford to lose because you want to give the trade a chance to work. BAC was a nice one. There's Boeing. We did do that a bunch of times this year. So you've got to risk the same or close to the same, okay? If you're able to do that, you're going to be able to be consistent and you can do more trades. And if you know I call a bunch of trades, then, then space yourself out as far as your risk so that you can do a couple. You don't want to just do one. Again, I, I may not do trades every day, but I might do this many in a week, for example. Like I said, I might do 10 in a week. So they might all be Monday or whatever. So you, you have to make a decision how many you want to do. Microsoft was a good one. PayPal. We've done a ton in PayPal. That week was not a good week. Remember that. We have had, most weeks we've been positive, but there have been some weeks this year where we had negative weeks. Baidu. It's a big one. And usually that's actually when the market hasn't cooperated. But then consequently, as I said, we've had weeks where we've had just had every single trade I call works. Every single one. No losers at all. Again, like I said, you can't screw it up. Winner, 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 winner. Everything's working. I think people tend to be more aggressive when that's happening, when I'm on a roll like that. But you still should set your risk accordingly and keep your risk normal depending on the size of your account. And if you want to ask me what I think about that, then ask me. Just ask me. There was BYND again. BA didn't work there. SPY was a big one. Um, I mean, we did a lot of these things. I mean, pretty much we just traded these things all year when they set up. We had to have good gaps. Some were calls. Some were puts. I don't do any fancy dancy spreads. If I rate the gap in the morning and it's a bullish gap and it gaps up, then we do a call on it. If I think it's going to move higher. Oh, there's the Adobe. If the stock gaps down and it's a bearish gap and it rains good, then we're going to do a put in it. We'll buy a put or we'll buy a call. Again, it has to do with the gap rating. It all has to do with the gap rating. There's Nike. Spy, Diamonds, Microsoft. Lots of good winners in here. NVIDIA again. Facebook again. IBM was a nice, solid trade again. Everyone loves it when they go the day that I call them. Google was really nice. I have to look at that when I get back from the holiday. Facebook, Facebook. McDonald's was a huge, huge, huge trade huge sometimes things go bigger than you even expect again that can happen particularly during the earnings season microsoft 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 look at the microsoft's that, that week nvidia did not cooperate but we've had good luck in nvidia overall this year peloton huge one another peloton a big one in tesla paypal worked and then we had one loser but overall paypal did have a spectacular move to the downside NVIDIA lost, Disney, nice trade, Tesla, one loser, one winner, huge second trade in Disney, just huge. Boeing was a winner, HD was a nice winner, Diamonds didn't work, Target, big trade, fell off the planet today, V was a nice trade, PayPal, again, huge call. We did the puts, uh, the Qs, and NVIDIA. So here we are, we're into, again, the end of the year, we'll see what we get. People always say, well, how many trades do you do in a week? I could call 30 if it's a busy week. I could call five if it's a slow week so you have to set your risk accordingly and just monitor it so you say say i call five trades on monday you do them all so you get out of them all on monday well if i call five more trades tuesday you can do them all then if you just want to be in five trades at a time if you get out of all of them with profit on the monday then you can do five the next day you don't have to limit yourself per week so again what if you can't take all the trades don't worry about it 
You have to look at the size of your account. You have to set your risk accordingly. If you have $5,000 in an options account, then you can't take $5,000 risk in one trade in an Amazon. You cannot do that. You can't risk your whole account in one trade. I've had people do that. I've had people do that and be successful because I call good trades, but no one should ever do that. And that was very risky for people to do that. And I lectured them after the fact. You know, you can't risk your whole account in one trade. You shouldn't risk half your account, actually, in one trade either. So you need to spread it out. Take one contract if that's how you can afford, but the risk should be similar. So we do things, I think, that are reasonably priced, but some of them are expensive, and then you just can't do those. You'll build your account up over time if you're taking profits, and then you can risk more as time goes on. Again, if you can't watch for the targets in the newsletter, then you need to set the sell order and go on with your day. Or if you don't trust yourself to get out with profit. Sometimes people have trouble taking profits. They get greedy. That does not happen often with me. Every once in a while, it will feel like I have a dream, dream, dream target and I'm stuck on it. But usually when I feel that way, to be quite honest with you, it goes to the dream target. It goes to the dream target. So again, this is experience. Experience has taught me quite a lot uh, to be able to look at things and make determination where I think it's gonna go and the timing. And again, timing is very important in an option. Here was the target. I just showed you we had a great trade in this. Again, do I think it's lower this week? Maybe, but I think everyone should be out of this by today. It fell off the planet today, huge move down. We called, I called the 255 strikes last Wednesday. Last Wednesday. On the earnings, 1126 was the expiration. It was a put. It fell. Again, I called it at 11 a.m. in the morning. You would get the trade to your email, and you know you, you do it when you get it into the open. You can't take trades in the pre-market. You have to wait until the open. I'd say take it 5, 10, 15 minutes into the open. Again, talking about risk per trade. So I have a high risk for my options because I want to do the expensive trades. You do not have to do this. And again, if you don't have the money, you cannot do this. If you want to take a smaller risk, ask me what I think. And again, if you want to just take your time, that's fine. You can open up an options account with as little as $2,000. Again, you cannot risk your whole account in one trade. I would start out with $100, $200 risk. Some trades we do, the Disney was 50 cents a contract for the one strike. 50 cents a contract. That was a phenomenal trade, actually. I, I, I looked at that when I pulled that up. I said, is this right? I didn't even think it was right. I couldn't believe, believe how cheap it was. That fell off the planet. That was a great call. That was a great trade. That was a put. We did that in the last uh, couple weeks, too. So, you know, don't think you can't do everything if you don't risk a big risk. You have to have the money and have experience to do the high risk trades, which you'll get there if you're following along. And the nice thing is with options, and the reason people like to do options, is you don't need a margin account to do options. You can trade options with a cash account and you can trade options with a small account too. You can take one contract, like I said, if it fits your account size. We are not doing fancy dancy options trades. We're buying calls and we're buying puts and we're selling them then when you put the order in and you, again, you could just set it and forget it if you really want to do that or if you're busy doing other things and you can't watch it. So what are the benefits of trading options? No margin required. Overnight risk is a fixed risk. You can capture overnight moves. We really did that in a bunch of things. Uh, PayPal was really one of those. You can put a sell order in after you buy it, like I said, and you can open up an account with only $2,000 at most brokers. So all retail brokers have the ability to do options if you want to. You can open a margins account for options if you want to be in, out, in, out, but you're going to need 25000 to do that for an, a margin account. Or you set up a cash account. Again, talk to your broker. I'm not a broker. They will tell you what to do and what you're allowed to do. I'm the one that's teaching you what to do if you want to learn from me, if you want to take the classes. I'm the one that analyzes the gaps in the morning. And again, the newsletters are sent to you via email in live time. Most of them are set in the pre-market, so you have plenty of time to figure out what you're doing and get the trades in the morning before you even begin your day. The benefit of being in my group is if you want to do the Golden Gap course, you'll learn the system, how I'm rating the gaps. And then you can be in the live day training room where I review the market and many other things that affect the trades. And like I said, sometimes if we're doing a day trade and the same thing is an option, obviously, obviously that is very beneficial because that tells you, wow, Melissa really, really likes this one. Melissa loves NVIDIA or Disney or whatever it happens to be. And then you'd want to make sure that you do both those trades. If you want to learn my system, though, you can take the class, the Golden Gap course. I teach it once a month. Or if you want to just sign up for the newsletter, the annual subscription is $69.99 a year. The newsletters, again, are emailed to you, and there's no prerequisites for this. I do not have monthly. Please do not ask me. 
It is only an annual subscription and you can sign up. If you want to do the class, the class is December 18th and 19th, nine to five. Class tuition is $69.99, class is online. This is the last class for 2021 for the Golden Gap. If you want to learn for 2022, you would have to sign up for this class and learn. You can also do the combo. We teach uh, trends, long-term trends in the trends course. I think that's helpful for options. I may not always go with the trend. Sometimes I will, sometimes I won't, but I still think it's helpful. It's helpful for day trades too, and it's definitely helpful for options, particularly if you're holding them for a long time. So again, learning is important. However, there are people that are making money on the letter that have never done my class. It's really, really, really up to you. Then there are people that trade in the letter and say, wait a minute, I see she knows what, what she's doing here. I got to figure this out better. Then they end up paying for the class after they paid for the letter and then they're doing both and then they understand it so much better. So it's really, really your call. Sometimes people need to get on the letter to make money, prove to themselves, just really just prove it to themselves that I know what I'm doing and that this works, start making money and then do the class and pay for the class after that. So it's totally up to you, whatever works, you are feel, feel free to call me 